everybody, and welcome to another episode of Tim and Tim Talk Event Production and AV. And with me, as always, Tim Kerbov is Tim. Hello. Hey, Tim. And we're in a special place Where are today. you, Tim? Where am I? Where I are am, you? I am here at the National Association of Broadcasters <laughs> Trade Show in Las Vegas, Nevada. Tim, are you here too? Tim, wait. Wait. Hold on, Tim. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> I see you too. Hey, Tim, we're, this is the first one in person. <laughs> we're together in the same place. What a wild, what a wild way to do a virtual podcast production. And we're here destroying the equipment just, too. Exactly. Doing that. Just did this assembling the studio around us. Tim, don't why tell are, anybody here no, at the Epifan booth. It was nice <laughs> enough to let us use their equipment. Exactly. First thing we do, start destroying <laughs> really. it. And indeed, uh, thank you to Epifan for hosting us here at their trade show booth here at the trade show. Epifan makes video encoding and transmission products, and they just just launched a new product. Um, I, I don't know if that's on our agenda here, Tim, to talk about, but we, we want to give a shout out to them and their new shout out. Connect Great products as well. Uh, we, Connect products. We've using them for years. We've using them for years and, and they have a new integration with Zoom, which is super cool. But Tim, we're here at the trade show. There's so many people who have new, exciting products. Tell me about what you've seen so far. And I know you, oh yeah, Tim, I got we're here. We're here. We're actually official. official. They the like you in the official badge. <laughs> Extremely hard to get. I had to give them my email. I know. And they let us I in. <laughs> So but before we get into that, Tim, we are at a special NAB because this one right here is um, this is the 100 year celebration of NAB. And so many people don't know this, but this is one of the longest running trade shows basically in America. It has been going 100 years for the most part. It went virtual during COVID, but it's one of the longest. I didn't know that. That's amazing. I didn't know that either. I got an, another fact for you, Tim. Oh, uh, I did a little, words. you know, it's a hundred years. Let's get into a little bit of the fun facts. Uh, do you know, Tim, and I'm pretty sure you don't. If you do, I'd be amazed. <laughs> the first title of NAB, what it was called. I do not. What's it? What was it first? In 1923, this was called the National Association of Radio Broadcasters. Oh, so the radio came, I guess radio came first, but you know. Yeah. Surprisingly. Surprisingly, yeah. Video killed the radio trade show. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we made it better, we like to think. There's and a, There's still a lot of radio here. <laughs> there's a ton of radio. I don't know what they do as a video person. <laughs> Right. But there's a lot of radio. The audio only. We have a podcast that's sort of like radio without the radio waves. That, that's like radio for today's. <laughs> radio for today's that's yeah. a today but version NPR of radio. NPR has a booth here. I saw NPR. I did not see yeah. them. Yeah, that is over cool. In West Hall. They're just like talking about syndication if you want to start playing NPR shows on your radio station. How about we talk about syndicating us to NPR? <laughs> Let's do that. Let's one. flip the tables on them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, as my screen went off. Uh, then let me see here. Then it finally went to National Association of Television and Radio Broadcasters in 1958. Okay. To where it is today. It was National Association of Broadcasters. Yeah, we just combined it all on all kinds of broadcasts. That's cool. And what? But when does the National Association of Internet Broadcasters come in? I mean, I think they're going to come in. And they're loading in after we leave here. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> they're decentralized as they should be. Yeah, right. And then the first one, maybe throw. I'm gonna uh, first city. Where do you think the first NEB was ever held? Was it in Anaheim? Ooh, I'm, great! But, but no, uh, no, remember, no, no, no. the hint is the radio. So wouldn't oh, it be this? Is, I guess. Chicago. Chicago. Surprisingly, I, Chicago. Ah, I mean, Chicago is a big convention town. I just, it I does. Yeah. And radio, that makes sense. WWBUR. That's Boston. I forgot the Chicago NPR station. What are some of the Chicago's? Yeah. W Chicago. <laughs> Great. W Chicago, <laughs> we'll right. go with that. Yeah. <laughs> the, okay. So we're at NAB. This is a huge show. 100,000 people attend. So it's one of the is largest. Is the official number? It's about 100,000 people attend wow. this show. 100,000 networking yeah. opportunities. Yeah. Um, with that, Tim, what is your advice to somebody that has never been here before? First time or coming through the door. You've been coming for a couple of years as I have been. Wear oh. comfortable shoes. Honestly, like that's just the best trade show advice. You need trade show shoes. I'm not wearing the best shoes and I'm already regretting it. Um, it, it's like you're walking on concrete all day. You're literally pounding the pavement for all these conversations. Um, and, uh, and it's brutal. Uh, li you literally just took what I was going to say as oh, well. Oh, we, we didn't, we didn't, coordinate, gonna, our <laughs> we didn't coordinate. We're doing this live. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, with that, I would add this year, brought a little snacks, brought my water bottle, water you know, is water is a big one. one. Water's a big one because there's so much to see. And I would say, just throwing this in there, give yourself time to do breaks. 
because there's a lot of information here and a lot to decompress. And somebody says, sit down. You got to, you see a chair that's oh, open, take snag it, snag it, take snag it. it right? <laughs> <laughs> Take it. <laughs> um, so we snagged a chair here in this booth. What do we also? Are, what do we want to talk about here about NAB and video? Let's let's do this. Um, they're very nice to give us these chairs. Great chairs. Yeah, very I'm so comfortable. Glad to be sitting down, honestly. What are your like? And I can start. Some yeah, of your totally. favorite things, or maybe some of the trends that you're seeing yeah, this year. Go for it. Yeah. I would say for me, uh, I literally wrote VR, 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 VR. Every other booth, it seems like, has VR, which mm -hmm. is exciting. Yeah. Um, I took this video, and we'll show this video. But essentially, Tim, I don't know if you remember, but like when um, the, the the motion capture required the famous green suits. Oh yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Well, take a look at this video that we're going to be playing here, and this one is going to be uh, it. It's live. They don't need to wear the suits anymore. Right. And so it's 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 amazing what this technology is doing mm. but it's still not there yet it's getting closer and closer right. but it's really cool the fact that the vr they don't need their suits anymore right right so um and then also with led walls mm -hmm. um tracking with the cameras and motion tracking it's just becoming much better and better totally. and many more folks are totally. you know i've seen a lot more expos and boosts yeah. there so i have some sort of meta trends one of the things is um there's a lot of back and forth about virtual, right? And I think in the events industry, we're seeing that with clients who are like, we're fully in person. And some clients are like, we're fully virtual again. At the show, I'm seeing a lot of interest in things like this, right? The remote production tools. And I'm seeing a ton of like cloud-based switching software. Um, yeah. You know, Epifan Connect That's is right. one of those yep. with the contribution tools. But I'm seeing so many of these products that are really, really have matured, right? In the last few years. And a lot of companies are really bringing those to the show and, and talking about them here. And then, you know, I, I think there's a really um, an interest in the remote production from, at this point, an efficiency and cost perspective, right? It's much less about like the public health crisis. And now it's about how do we get more video sure. out in the world? I mean, we do a remote production ourselves for this podcast for yep. that reason. And so it's really interesting to see that um, as much as this is a broadcast like TV show with cameras and you know uh, and and tripods and the like, infrastructure, there's a lot of these tools that are really helping people do production over the internet. Absolutely, I mean that's literally what is taking place right now. Yeah, totally. Right, totally. producer Dan is somewhere you know not here. <laughs> I mean he could be on the other side of the wall. I mean he's not, but yeah, he's not. Yeah. But you know, and it's basically we're just bringing in. You know, it really emphasizes that. The remote production, the decentralized production studio, or the centralized master control room, and then you send out your equipment. Yeah. I've been having conversations with different booths of, of you know, different ways to, totally. to do that. Totally. SRT, NDI, you know, what's the most professional, reliable way for multiple cameras totally. to go? You know, if shows coming up in New York and Miami, totally. do we send the full production crew out there, yeah. or do we just send the camera totally. operator? And, and I've talked to a couple different companies on both sides of that equation here talking about, you know, at one case, a, a large production company that is contracting smaller production companies to provide their onsite support, you know, um, yeah. at events. And then another company that provides like production kits and they are that smaller company that's providing really nimble teams to do that contribution over a higher quality video link. And I, you know, that's, and that's one of the, one of my things that I saw a lot of this year that I haven't seen um, in previous NABs mm -hmm. is remote production in a box. Totally, totally. Right, so the, the Pelican opens yeah. up, the camera. I was talking with some of um, some of the attendees and friends here. And yeah. They're still, you know, remote production is still going mm -hmm. strong. They're still shipping out camera kits. Totally. And so now it's becoming a more professional solution. Totally, and, and for the clients, it's, it's cost effectiveness, right? You, you're sending a kit and maybe one person maybe no one to you know these talents house or talents location and so you can do a multi-site production with a really lean crew and then right you're switching it from a central controller what's switching. your thoughts on it when they become like you're sending a client a giant pelican case like so, what's that user experience yeah. you s literally the thing is like an old fashioned, like the size of a trunk, like it's probably like 50 pounds. And then, like, like you give them a coffee. back brace, yeah. like before they lift, so, put it on your nice table. I, exactly. I, what I what do you like, tell them? I feel like it makes a lot of sense when you're sending it to an end client or a talent person, talent's house to send it, send us a tech with it. I, I think where those kits make sense potentially to send without a 
attack where for the for at least the companies that make them is you know when you're sending it to like us right when 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 Argus is doing a production out of your studio and you need a, you need a camera in New York maybe you're sending your own tech right to that and the box gets just gets you know sent to the FedEx store so that makes more sense in that context I do feel a little weird sending this giant box to like a the talent's house and expecting them to put it together on their own. And know? I think that's a good takeaway in the sense that it's not zero hands on deck. And I right. think that point needs to be emphasized. Right. There's still a team. That team may be one person right. on site. Right. But really that team is it's it's not just I want to say it's not just magic buttons, but literally, Tim, I'm seeing like remote teleprompter controls now remote mics that is yeah. super, like literally the teleprompter go beep, beep. yeah it doesn't do that i'm adding that for yeah, dramatic yeah. effect right <laughs> now absolutely beep, beep. <laughs> but the teleprompter comes yeah. up the microphone on a stick it's right telescope telescopes it's, up it right? telescopes up yeah and it's like those are cool for like schools or yeah. different places where you're going to have a centralized control so i was talking to one of those remote camera kit company. It's a company called Remote Controls. Shout out to Bill Davis, from Remote Control Kits. Um, and I was talking to him this morning about his kits, which are a little different. They're, they're a little more assembled, like you used to have to put in, but they have a teleprompter with a camera, not like a mirrorless camera onto the back. And it's designed, right, for, for this kind of thing, right, where, you know, you, you set up the kit. Typically, either he's going to send a, a tech or he sends it to someone like us and we send a tech. But, you know, so it's not necessarily you know, end user proof, but it's really designed to yeah. have really high quality video, the built in teleprompter. And it's designed for, you know, he's seeing that so much where like, you know, you have, um, you know, a CEO doing a presentation and they send this kit out so that, you know, he or she looks really good on that presentation remotely. And like, they don't want to give them back, you know, their rentals. They don't want, they, they, they can't keep them. Really? They don't want to give them back. He's really? Like, but they, obviously his kids, but like, all yeah, the kids, yeah. Right? That these, these executives love it because that's great. They look good. They feel comfortable with the teleprompter. And, and so it's really a great way, you know, to make them feel comfortable in their own office. It's Cause like, you know, a lot of people are saying like, you know, Hey, we put, built the studio, you know, but the yeah. exec doesn't want to come into the, the studio. technology is so good right now. Yeah. And it's only getting better. And it's like, we keep saying that every year. It's like the way we did productions is not the way we're going yeah. to be doing productions. Productions in a box. Totally. It's essentially, totally. that might be the theme of this year, production in a box. Right. Well, in, in this scale, I mean, we're literally talking on these cameras that are, you know, like old cube, right? I mean, the cameras we're using in this, in this studio, you know, and like, yeah, they're it's tiny. amazing. Like how, small like broadcast yeah, cameras have gotten right if you didn't look at the cameras you wouldn't even notice them no totally they're they blend into the background and, and i think that as we think about the the way productions evolve and obviously this trade show right has been around for 100 years some of the the companies that are exhibiting here have been around for almost 100 years the people who are in the broadcast space have seen the evolution of the industry from like the origins of television, right? And so it's really cool to be at this show where there is that legacy where, yep. you know, you're running to somebody from like CBS who like pioneered sports TV, you know, like it's, yeah, it's yeah. really cool to be in this environment where we're all working towards the same goal of making broadcast better. And that's really a lot of the, the goal. And I, I would say the draw, I would yeah. say of NAB is that energy, like the, some of the conversations that are happening that are right. not, that you you couldn't necessarily have on Zoom. So now yeah. I think it's like Zoom production in a box. It's we understand it as a tool totally. when it's the right time. But you know, I remember with us talking about this during the pandemic. Yeah. Is that uh, productions? You know, are live events going away? And you're like, you know, they're never going away. No, you can't we, human experience. We want that connection, right? We do. And, and so much of the show is. It, it, it's really exciting for me to be here. I should say, right? Because. I'm feeling like, you know, we're walking around and like, it's a reunion. We're seeing all these people that, you know, we only see once a year or that some people yeah, have yeah. never met in person before. And it's like, oh, you're in 3D and it's that connection. And, you know, the, the, the people that, you connection know. Connection and networking, networking like, that right? takes and, and place. So much of it happens on a show floor, but so much of it happens, frankly, at the restaurant and bar after the show where, you know, it's those people that we yes, really does. connect with. And, and, you know, it, it's really great to me to be here this year this year feels different for me honestly i don't know how this it, feels to you it does i mean after last year it felt like it was what there was this what was it post surge like yeah. we just had a little bit and then i felt like it was it was a light uh the exhibitor mm -hmm. count was smaller yeah the attendee count was small i think it was a might have been a shorter you can fact check me on that let's date, just say it is but it definitely didn't this feels and i remember that's a great point i was commenting to somebody else this feels like it was 
before the pandemic. It like, does. This was like full steam ahead. Right? It, this correct. feels like um, we're making the connections. We're having the conversations. Yep. We're having so many amazing, like inspired conversations with people. Yep. And you know, you, like, and just use your hand sanitizer. That's like yeah. what I'm using more hand yeah, sanitizer totally, than 2019. Yeah. Yeah. That's the main difference. But, but it's it's been amazing to have conversations like this with everyone. We're all like, Everybody. where are you? And it's like I said about the industry. I feel like this show is about the industry coming together to be better. And as much as so many people here are in competition, I am feeling a, such a camaraderie here, right? I'm I, yeah, I mean, like, is it, maybe it's competition between like different manufacturers right, and JVC and or whatever, as right? it is like vendors, like yeah. if we were all to get together yeah. in expo, like yeah. why you should go with ours. But yeah, I definitely, there is definitely a camaraderie that exists amongst uh, the industry. Totally. Totally. And I with, feel that in person here. It's so great, you know? Any so one other one that I found the a theme of this show, Robo cameras are Robocams, yeah. everywhere. Yeah. And they're getting super cheap. They are. It's unbelievable. Like and the remote control of those robo cameras, which has been around for a little bit of time, but I feel like it's breaking through sort of a gravitational yeah, pull totally. that I'm now seeing like booth after booth after booth of robotic cameras. And right. and I will say this for, for folks that are interested in the robo cameras, you do get what you pay for. So it buy at your budget. And I think that's the biggest advice. If if you're looking at a, you know, we bought the Sony FR7s, right? And they're about ten to twelve thousand dollars a camera. We could have easily gone, you know, a couple of booths over and got a, a two thousand dollar camera or a one thousand. And I'll tell you what, those actually have Sony chips in them as well. So it's not like you know, you're just throwing extra money out there just because you're getting value with it. So, right. And obviously, that camera in particular, you have the interchangeable lenses and the more sort of cinema style shooting in a PTC body. There's a lot of innovation in that at both ends exactly. of the market, right? There's innovation that Sony's pushing, pushing the envelope of PTC can be. Oh, and then the companies so true. at the lower end are pushing, how can we the get the budget? As, <laughs> but, well, the budget. But honestly, you're getting a lot of camera for that $2,000. It's unbelievable. Right? And yes. So it's obviously, right, you're not going to get the same picture out of those cameras, but it is, particularly if you're looking at Correct. Like a conference room, boardroom, you know, like you can city get a, hall you can get a lot meetings, of a three lot four thousand dollars, yeah, like, a lot of ca uh, three and four thousand dollars. Yeah, you're getting a, yeah. a pretty decent one. I mean, even a thousand dollars now, and you just want one, you know, cat five or cat yeah. six cable, depending on the model, right? And then you're you're controlling and everything about it. Speaking of the cat five, right? This I IP broadcast. So you know, NDI twenty one ten. I mean, Black Magic just announced a twenty one ten. They're holding Cougar. hard to. They are. They're going the Sempty route. Yeah. Black Magic's going yeah. Sempty. New Tech is going NDI. Yeah. Well, it, New Tech invented NDI. <laughs> fair enough. Yeah, that's probably why they're sticking <laughs> right, with right. it. But, Shock. <laughs> but we're seeing, you know, there's a lot of discussion, at, both at the sort of NDI, uh, you know, hardware level, you know, kind of broad landscape and the 2110, like infrastructure level building a studio, you know, and that we're seeing, you know, like, you know, Ravana, which is 2110 and, and, and uh, AES67 in one, you know, connection. We're seeing so many, you know, standards on the market, so many ways to do you know, high quality video over a local network. And then so many with products, yes. right, that are doing the network video, over the internet video, both teleconferencing and long range, right? And like bridging NDI over Correct. the internet. There's so many ways to get video. So many ways to do it. So many production. flavors of ways right. to do it and too. And we're talking about remote. I mean, you know, you know, you and I spent a lot of time and last year looking at, you know, sa yep. uh, satellite and phone and cellular connections, right? We talked about that on other episodes. You know, tell me about what you've seen in the cellular space. You've, you know, you invested in cellular last year, this yes. last year. But yes, what have I you did. seen in, in that market here at the show today? You know, I'm seeing it's becoming a lot more cost effective. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing more and more players come into the space, which is only going to benefit, you know, the production companies when that ultimately benefits our clients totally. and customers because we can now lower the price totally. instead of like, you know, renting them a piece of equipment that costs $50,000. Totally. We can rent them something that's $5,000 or uh, I mean, just before this, I was talking to different vendors of yeah. like a hundred dollars a month solution. Totally. There's so many different ways to approach it. And I would say for those folks that that this is of interest to them is make sure that you do your research in it. Make sure you run testing on it. Mm -hmm. You know, get the shiny pamphlets because those are a great yeah. starting. Get them on your radar. Totally. But then after that, um, you know, I want to start running tests. We're going to yeah. have production companies in New York that, right. you know, I want to, you know, okay, let's test our signal. Totally. Let's leave it up for 24 hours. And I think with that, with this technologies, it, you know, 
it, there's differences in the encoding, there's differences in the actual cellular modem technology, and there's differences in the antennas. And, and it's really important to understand the landscape that you're using it in, right? Are you using it on a ship in the ocean, like being back to shore? Are you using it in the middle of Manhattan? Yep, are you using yep. it, you know, in LA? Or are you using it, you know, in like a cornfield? Because those are really different environments with different like radio landscapes. And yep. you have to understand those three components in terms of like your actual use case before you pick which is the best. And I'm going to add a fourth component to that is also the level of production that you're doing, the totally. mission critical failure rate of that. Because I would love to use a lot of these $100 subscription a month options that exist right now. I just understand and I don't feel confident mm -hmm. yet to my client that all the other money they invested in their show right. is is I can guarantee them 100 percent video totally. signal that's up for you know totally. eight hours, ten hours a day. That's a very interesting point. And kind of looking at this show, there's a really wide breadth of Correct. technologies at, at, all, at all the product offerings, right? Where there's a ton of products targeted at you know podcasting and YouTube kind of things, and there's a ton of podcast you know products that are targeted at you know like NBC and CNN broadcasters, and it's I think that's right. Looking at the product landscape. You have to think about your production in the event space, right? We use products kind of across that gamut for different purposes. And so really understanding in every production, what is the specific thing we're doing and how mission critical is it before we pick a technology and a price and, point for that technology? And I'm going to say to get a little philosophical on well, what you're saying there, Tim, because I agree with that, is uh, I always use the uh, analogy that filmmaking, this is... Filmmaking has been out of the hands of the artist. It always required collaboration. It mm -hmm. always required a ton of money. It always required expensive equipment. We're now finally at the point in time where filmmaking is affordable. Mm -hmm. We're now at the point of time where live events and video production is affordable to everybody. And so I think with that, to echo your point, yeah. understand your budget, understand where you're going in, right. and then hit that target. Totally. You know? And obviously so. a lot of it can be done on your phone, right? I mean, you can do a tremendously high quality production. Which we did last year did. with yeah. Tim and Tim Talk, totally. NAB. <laughs> Wait, that was actually our first person in there. Oh, that was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. So with that, Tim, you're, we're almost done here. Yeah. Where? What's your plan? This is, by the way, day three. We, we wanted to wait to you know, get sort of the gist and the, right. the energy before we came and talked right. to everybody right. here. Right, we want to see, what, see the show before see we the tell show. you about the show, exactly. So you're asking what's your question, what, what do I see next? What do you, what's, what's on your agenda? You got another day here, yeah. what's your focus? So you're running out of time. for me was meetings, 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 and it was like sitting down, having a really like conversation about business. Today for me is exploring, right? I really didn't get to explore yesterday. So today for me is wandering by the booths, like saying hi to my friends who happen to be, you know, at another in town or on the show, like the organic hallway conversations. Today for me is about the discovery. And what I love about the trade show environment is the organic discovery where I walk by and like that caught my eye. What was that? Tell me about this thing, right? Yeah, make sure you stop. Make sure like and that's yeah. one of the things like how many times do you do this, Tim, where you're just like Oh yeah, there's the like. The I don't head, really want the, the exhibitor to know that I'm looking. You know, like yeah, I don't really, like, I don't really, I'm not ready to commit to even a conversation. Okay, but fine. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm coming but in. I'm sort of like, oh, don't scan my badge. Don't scan my badge. Yeah. <laughs> Those emails last for months. So I'll tell you a secret, Tim. Go ahead. And I'm, I guess I'm announcing this on my podcast, but I but made, I made a, uh, I made a, an email address just for this show. You made, you made uh, an event specific email. Yeah. It's not so a it's, fake it's one. My, it's not. It's real. It goes to my inbox, but it's it's Tim Nab23. Genius. So I know Why what, have I not how, done I this they, yet? How, I know that they added me from the show. <laughs> Why have I not done this? <laughs> Next year, Tim. I'm, and I'm gonna, Tim, and it'll be 24 yeah, of yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in it. <laughs> I think for, for myself, it's it's definitely echoing what you're saying. I have, uh, with the Remy Productions, I have yeah. more conversations with folks. Um, and so I'm going to make my way over to that booth. Yeah. And, and, and just try to discover new new options totally. in that space. It, it's about, to me, today is organic. Today is, let's yeah. see what it feels like. Let's see where people are. And, yeah. and I'm gonna take it slow, because yesterday I was hitting the show hard and, and I was exhausted by the other day. <laughs> Tim is, I mean, as much as I love chatting with you yeah. over here, I mean, we have work to do. We have work Not to do. Not just here. Yeah, absolutely, right? absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you to Epifan for hosting us here in their thank booth. Thank you so much. We greatly appreciate that. 
And uh, with that, Tim. I mean, I would say first, before we get out of here, we should invite folks to, you know, we always love comments, suggestions. If you have a show idea, uh, if you want to be a part of the show, you know, hit us up on one of the socials yep. that, you, that you're seeing there. Um, share it if you feel that there's somebody that you feel, you know, wants some advice with uh, to come to NAB in the future or just a, I feel like it's just good general conference advice totally, totally. that we Absolutely. gave that's yeah. applicable to everybody. Um, and actually, you know, if you're going to be at NAB 2024, obviously it's a little early, but let us know. Reach out to us next year and we'll try to meet up with you at the show. We should do like Set a, a reminder. Set, Set a we reminder. should. A meetup yeah. would be a great um, idea. A lot of meetups this year. We love and, them. And we'll put our email address here. It's Tim's, T-I-M-S at Tim and Tim talk.com. That goes to both of us. Uh, you know, we'll, uh, we fight over Rochambeau for who answers the emails. <laughs> I mean, uh, listen, that's always, I always say I want to do it, but you're so you just you want to reach out you want uh, to communicate <laughs> we're, we're all about that connection so Tim, cool. anything else we got to say here? i think you know that's it we're just an exciting floor you can probably hear it in the oh, buzz absolutely. let's get out of there so i say my name is tim k and i'm tim kerbavas and and we, we talked. talked yes and we were close so because close. we're in person we did it <laughs> awesome thanks everybody thanks,